Hello and welcome to Front Runner Motorsport. This is part two of our look at every Formula One driver who also raced in the Deutsche Tourenwagen Masters, the DTM, both old and new. In the last episode, we looked at 14 drivers from the likes of Formula One champions such as Michael Schumacher and Mika Hakkinen, two legends of DTM like Bern Schneider. Today we are looking at yet another 14 drivers to have raced in both Formula One and DTM. And we have plenty more for a couple more episodes. So you better subscribe so you don't miss them. Or any of the other great motorsport videos coming soon. And with that, let's jump into the video. Olivier Grilliard. The Frenchman was once a star of the international F3000 scene, taking two wins for GBDA in 1988 and finishing runner-up in the championship to Roberto Moreno. Grilliard went on to drive for top-tier Formula 1 teams such as Ligier and Tyrrell. Unfortunately, he raced for them about a decade after they were successful. He joined Ligier in 1989 and scored his only Formula 1 point at the French Grand Prix, but also failed to qualify for four races. He moved to Ostella in 1990, the final driver to ever race for the team, then to Fond Metal in 1991, as well as a failure to qualify for AGS in their final Grand Prix weekend. His final year in Formula 1 was four races finished with 12 retirements and no points for Tyrrell in 1992. He finished just off the podium at Le Mans a few times, raced in various sports car championships without success and even had a really average season in America in the kart series. So was his time in DTM any better? No. But it was just two races in 1992 for Bugatti in a BMW M3 at the Nürburgring. He finished 11th and 13th. Juan Pablo Montoya. I didn't even realise Montoya had raced in the DTM. Well, technically it was the International Touring Car Championship of 1996, but that basically was just DTM imploding, so it counts. Again, just two races. Juan Pablo Montoya raced in a Mercedes at Silverstone and retired from both races. A couple of years later, he won the International F3000 Championship, followed by the Kart Series in America in 1999, and then the Indy 500 in 2000. He joined Williams in Formula 1 and won four races before winning another three with McLaren. He's won his class in the Daytona 24 Hours three times, the IMSA Championship. He's taken a win in NASCAR and wins in IndyCar, including another Indy 500. Now he gets to watch his son race in the Junior Formula, and he still races in sports cars himself. Roberto Meri. Our first driver to race in more than two DTM races is Spaniard Roberto Meri. His time in Formula 1 was brief, just 14 races for Manor in 2015 without scoring points. But he has raced in just about everything. The Formula 3 Euro Series champion of 2011 raced in DTM for two years for Mercedes. In 2012 he raced for Person Motorsport, finished second to last with no points and the team folded at the end of the year. Meri raced for HWA in 2013 and did at least score points for them, but he was still pretty low down in the standings. 15th with only 4 points finishes, but in his final DTM race to date, he finished 2nd to Timo Glock. Since he left Formula 1, he has raced in everything from Formula E to the Australian S5000 series, and has won just one race in the last decade. Manfred Winkelhock, Doing a couple of races in the 1984 Deutschen Produktionswagen Meisterschaft in 1984, might make Manfred Winkelhock the first to do both DTM and Formula 1. This was towards the end of his tragically short career. After grabbing a fair few podiums in European Formula 2, he had a rough time in Formula 1, racing for smaller backmarker teams such as the brand new Arrows team, ATS, a sole appearance for Brabham and Skull Bandit Ram. 1985 was his final season after two races in Germany in the DPM in a BMW 635 CSI for Brune. He was killed in a sports car race at Mosport. Joachim Winkelhock. The younger brother of Manfred, Joachim would go on to be one of the most successful touring car drivers of the 90s. He would spend half a season in Formula 1 with AGS, but never qualified for the small German team. Going on to race in the DTM in 1986 and becoming a series regular up to 1992. He took three wins for BMW in that time, with his best season being a sixth overall in 1990. He went on to be the British Touring Car Champion in 1993 and Super Touring Wagen Cup winner in 1997. He won two Macau Gaia races and the 1999 24 Hours of Le Mans, all with BMW. 
He rejoined the new DTM in 2000 with Team Holtz at Opel and took one win that year, but he struggled over the next few years and retired from motorsport after the 2003 DTM season. Marcus Winkelhock Our final Winkelhock for now is Marcus Winkelhock, son of Manfred and nephew of Joachim. He of course famously led his only Formula 1 race for Spiker in 2007 at the Nürburgring in Bahrain. He did drop back, unfortunately, and never drove in Formula 1 ever again. He was just 5 when his father died, but he clearly didn't put him off motorsports. He first raced in DTM in 2004 for Person Mercedes, but scored no points. He returned in 2007, this time in an Audi, and scored his first points in 2008. He was always a midfield driver, his best season was 10th in 2009. He returned to the series 17 years after his debut in 2021, doing two races in an Audi and scored no points. Outside of not being very successful in Formula 1 and DTM, he has won numerous GT titles around the world and still races to this day. Jacques Lafitte The 1975 European Formula 2 champion became synonymous for his time with Ligier in Formula 1. After debuting with Frank Williams in 1974 and nabbing a first podium for the team in 1975, he moved to Ligier in 1976. He stayed with the French team for the next seven years and took six wins for the team before joining the newer Williams team in 1983, returning to Ligier for another season and a half, but having to retire from Formula 1 after injuries sustained in a big crash at Brands Hatch. He began racing touring cars in 1987 in the World Touring Car Championship with Alfa Romeo, but also raced in the European Series for a couple of years. He began his three-season stint in DTM in 1990, with Bugatti BMW, he took a win and finished 7th overall. He spent the next couple of years in a Mercedes but only nicked a few podiums and ended his full-time career. He turns up occasionally in strange series like the Renault Megan Euro Cup in 2013 and various GT and historic races even as late as 2018. Robert Kubitzer The Polish superstar has become a very successful sports car driver in recent years. He's a champion of the European and World Le Mans Series LMP2 class and is now racing in the hypercar class in a Ferrari. He was also a very good Formula 1 driver, winning for BMW Sauber at the Canadian Grand Prix of 2008, and was usually a consistent point scorer for them and Renault, until his injuries sustained in a rally crash interrupted his career, and seemingly ended it. However, he made a much-loved return to Formula 1 in 2019 with Williams, and a couple of appearances for Alfa Romeo. He initially returned to the rallying in 2013, which was brave, but he also raced in the DTM in 2020 in a Team ART BMW. Not the best season ever, but he did take a podium late on in the season and left to become successful in sports cars. Karl Wendlinger The Austrian and German Formula 3 champion made his debut in DTM at the age of 21. This was because he was racing for Helmut Marko's team in everything at the time, DTM, German F3 and Macau. In 1990, he did a few races for the Works Mercedes team, but didn't score points and was soon racing in Formula 1 with March and eventually the Mercedes-powered Sauber team. He scored the odd points finish, but was soon only doing part-time seasons and his final F1 race in 1995. After some success in various GT series, such as winning the FIA GT Championship in 1999, he returned to DTM in 2002 for Audi, but in his two years back, he only scored points occasionally and he returned to GTU Racing, retiring in 2016. Yannick Dalmas I may have to do a Formula 1 underrated on French driver Yannick Dalmas. He scored no points in Formula 1 and in fact rarely qualified, but when you consider he only raced for duff teams such as LaRousse and AGS, it's understandable. Outside of Formula 1, he was a quality driver. He began racing in Formula 1 in 1987 after taking a couple of international F3000 wins in 1987 with Orica. Whilst he never scored points in F1, he put in some decent enough performances for LaRousse, finishing 7th and just out of the points a few times. After two years of failing to qualify for almost every race for LaRousse and AGS, he moved away from Formula 1 after 1990, except for two races for LaRousse in 1994. Outside of winning for 24 hours of Le Mans four times for Peugeot, Jost Porsche, McLaren and BMW, he also raced in touring cars and for DTM, racing for Jost, Opel in 1995 and 1996. He scored points occasionally but finished 19th in 1995, just ahead of Formula 1 safety car driver Bernd Mylander, and 17th in 1996. He continued racing until the early 2000s. 
Nicholas Chiesa. The Danish driver accomplished very little on his way up to Formula 1. He had won a British Formula 4 championship and won the odd junior Formula race around the world, but was hardly a success story. But then in 2003, he won the Monaco round of the International F3000 Championship and was signed by Minardi to replace Justin Wilson, who had just jumped to Jaguar. Chiesa partnered Joss with Stappen for five races and he did finish all of them with a best 11th in America. He did three DTM races in 2006 with Audi, but his best finish was 16th at Zandvoort. His career pretty much ran its course thereafter and he quietly disappeared from motorsport. Liam Lawson Really the man of the moment, Liam Lawson only made his Formula 1 debut in 2023 for Alfa Tori and put in some fantastic performances. He was also a regular winner in Formula 2 and put in a strong challenge for the Super Formula title last year. He spent one year in DTM in 2021 and took Ferrari's first DTM wins. Three wins put him in title contention, but he lost out to Maximilian Goetz after some Mercedes teamwork. Liam Lawson only lost by three points and has been a top driver everywhere ever since, with hopefully a bright future in Formula 1 ahead of him. Eric van der Poel The 1987 DTM champion never won a race in DTM. That's a pretty good stat right there. He was very consistent in his BMW M3 in 1987 and that was enough to win the championship despite never climbing the top step. He'd do the odd DTM race over the next few years, but never ran in the series full time again. In 1990, he finished second in the International F3000 Championship behind Eric Comas and was soon in Formula 1 with Modena Spa for 1991. He failed to qualify for every race bar one, where he almost finished on the podium if he hadn't run out of fuel. He'd spent another year failing to qualify for Brabham and he did a few races for Fon Metal, but switched back to touring cars, having a poor half season in the British touring cars, but taking wins in Spain and a class win at Le Mans. David Coulthard Our final driver for today is the Scottish bin with the chin, David Coulthard. Despite a couple of average seasons in the International F3000, he was hired by Williams and eventually made his way into Formula 1. He took five wins in 1995 for the team but switched to McLaren in 1996, spending the next eight years with the team and finishing runner-up to Michael Schumacher in 2001. He joined Red Bull and stayed with the team in their infancy until 2008 when he swapped out for Sebastian Vettel. Before retiring from racing completely, Coulthard raced in DTM for three years for Mercedes, scoring one point in 2010, one point in 2011 and 14 points in 2012. He only scored points in four races over three years, finishing 16th, 16th and 15th. He really should have given up after Formula 1. So there were 14 more race drivers who have raced in both DTM and Formula 1. We have looked at 28 in total and we have plenty more to come. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Who were your favourite DTMX Formula 1 crossovers? Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss parts 2 and 3. Thank you very much for watching and have a good one.